Let's do a quick example using a GSD-8 digital DC drive in rate mode. I connected this digital DC drive to this motor. I then mounted this encoder to the end of the shaft. Now be aware that you may have to enlarge the hole in the fan shroud to do this. I then wired the encoder back to the drive and added a jog and an inhibit switch. This encoder comes with three pulse rate discs for 1, 10 and 20 pulses per revolution. I'm using the number 40 disc since that's what comes pre-installed and it's what you want to use most of the time to get the most resolution and accuracy. In fact, the only time you'd use the others is for very high speed applications where the pulse rate is too fast for the drive to handle them. My motor can only do 2000 RPM and the encoder has 20 pulses per revolution so that's a max pulse rate of 40,000 pulses per minute which is way under the drive's max input pulse rate of 600,000 pulses per minute. Now be aware the smaller 5 amp drives can only do 50,000 pulses per minute but it's still better than the 40,000 ppm we need so we're good no matter which drive we use. Now this drive has over 100 parameters we can set. The good news is for this simple demo we don't need to change any. The factory defaults will work just fine. So before we do anything, let's reset the drive to factory default to make sure we're all on the same page. Hold down the enter key for 3 seconds or until the parameter LED lights up. Scroll to parameter 95 and press enter. The value LED lights up to tell us we're changing a value. Change it to a 5 and press enter. The display tells us to press the up button to confirm and the down button to exit. I'll press the up button and we're now factory fresh. By the way, this parameter entry method is exactly the same for the 5 amp drives but they don't have the LEDs to tell you what mode you're in. Instead, you'll see a P for parameter entry and blinking dots for value entry. Also beware that the 5 amp model parameter numbers can be different. So don't assume that the parameter numbers I'm using on this 10 amp model will be the same for the 5 amp drives. Some are, some aren't. I'll put the 5 amp model parameter numbers in brackets to remind you. Ok. Let's scroll up to how about 360 RPM. I'll grab my handheld tack and sure enough we're right at 360 RPM. Perfect. The jog speed defaults to 1000. So if we enable jog, sure enough the motor goes immediately to 1000 RPM. Now note that it does that immediately. It doesn't wait for the acceleration or deceleration times. I'll release the jog and it resumes the speed we had before. Ok, well it's great that it worked right out of the box but we didn't actually learn anything about how to configure the drive. So let's mess with some of the parameters so we can get a better feel for how this GSD-8 digital DC drive works. Do you want the drive to automatically run when the power is applied or do you want to manually ramp it up to speed like we just did? You actually have three options via parameter 16. Always start at 0 RPM, always use whatever is in parameter 17 or use the last entered value. The drive defaults to use the last entered value so if I power down, give it a second and bring it back up, sure enough it picked up right where we left off. Let's change that to use the value in parameter 17. I'll hold the enter button down for 3 seconds, the parameter LED lights up telling us we're in parameter mode. Scroll up to parameter 16, hit enter. Let's change it to use whatever we put in parameter 17 which according to the user manual is a 2. Enter to accept. Scroll up to 17, press enter and let's have the drive always start at 1000 RPM. Enter to accept. Now we don't actually have to exit the parameter settings. As soon as we hit enter to accept the value, it was done. We're currently at 360 RPM so if I power down the drive, give it a second or two and then bring it back up again, it goes directly to 1000 RPM. Exactly what we asked for. Ok, we got our rate set. How about the acceleration and deceleration? Those are in parameters 23 and 24. Again, hold down the enter button for 3 seconds, scroll to parameter 23, hit enter. This is in engineering units per second which for us is RPM. The 9999 says ramp up as fast as possible. We're running the motor at 1000 RPM so if we say we want to accelerate at a rate of 100 RPM per second it should take 10 seconds to ramp up to speed, right? Enter to accept that, I'll power down, give it a second and power back up. Briefly pressing the enter button shows you the current tack value while the tack LED is lit. I'll press it a couple more times and sure enough we see it took about 10 seconds to ramp up to speed. 
Pressing Enter over and over to see the actual motor RPM is a pain. Can we tell the display to show that all the time? Sure. The number we see in the display by default is the target speed. Let's change that to the actual speed so we don't have to press the Enter key to see the tech. Hold the Enter key for 3 seconds, scroll to parameter 12, press Enter. We see we're now in value entry mode. And we'll change that to a 2. Notice that you can also display the master's RPM if this drive is a follower. That's great for debugging master follower configurations because you can see if the follower is getting the pulses from the master. OK, this time let's scroll to parameter 0 and hit Enter to get out of parameter entry mode. Now if I inhibit the motor and wait for it to stop, then remove the inhibit, sure enough our display is now showing us the actual speed of the motor. What if instead of an encoder, you have some other pickup sensor generating the feedback pulses coming back into the drive? Maybe you have a flow meter that sends out pulses representing gallons per minute or a gear tooth sensor counting the number of teeth passing by. You can use any sensor you want as long as it's generating a digital waveform between 0 and 5 to 24 volts DC. Just enter that sensor's PPR in parameter 32. Now one thing to be careful of, the 10 amp drive defaults to 20 PPR, which is convenient because that's what the default for the GSD8 encoder is. But the 5 amp drives default to 1 PPR, so you may have to change that if you want to use one of the GSD8 encoders. By the way, I love that the drive has a convenient 5 volt output for me to use with my sensors. There's lots of parameters for you to use to customize the drive for your application, so now that you know how, go experiment with them. And there's a bunch of optional modules and other units that you can use to extend the capabilities of these drives. We'll be doing videos for many of these features, so click here to subscribe so you'll be notified when those go live. Click here to see all of the currently published videos in this series, and click here to learn about AutomationDirect's free tech support options.